everyone, hello and welcome to episode 100 of BIM After Dark Live. Pretty wild. Uh, for those of you who have been around since the very beginning, you know that this live stream started out as um, not being called BIM After Dark Live and it was just simply a live happy hour I started uh, back in the very beginning of the pandemic. So actually almost exactly three years to today. Um, and it started out the very first episode was actually um, me comparing Enscape, Twin Motion, and Lumion in one episode. I'll put a link to that below. Um, so lots of things have changed since then. The second episode, I believe, was a, uh, a, uh, a double guest appearance by Paul Ar Aubin and Marcelo Scambaleri, who have been on the show many times since. Um, I never thought back when I back when I started this happy hour thing that it was going to become a 100 episode um, continuous live stream um, with uh, the amazing guests, the amazing content, uh, the amazing audience like you guys um, coming to hang out uh, every single week for uh, 100 weeks. So thank you guys. Uh, cheers to everybody. Hopefully you all have your cocktails for tonight. And uh, we're going to have some fun. It's just me tonight. Um, bringing it back to uh, the very, very first episode. Uh, just me hanging out here. Um, and I did reach out to most of you guys. And um, I did ask sort of what topic we should do. I had a couple topics ready to go. But I did want to sort of, um, you know, it being the first or the 100th episode, I did want to um, sort of uh, see what, what you guys wanted to hear. Um, so uh, overwhelmingly, um, there was kind of two, two topics that really rose to the top. And overwhelmingly, it was uh, Revit 2024. So we're going to talk about Revit 2024 today. Um, you may have seen some some content and some posts about it on, on other websites and channels, and all those are great, and I definitely think you should check them out. Um, what I'm going to do tonight is really just pick my top three, my top three favorite new features, and just geek out on them. Um, I think uh, um, they're probably the ones that move the needle most for me, um, understanding that there's a lot of new features in it. Um, but these are kind of the three major changes or additions or features that uh, I wanted to uh, to pinpoint for tonight. Um, looks like we've got some, hey everyone, in the chat there. Uh, this is live, so I will be checking out the chat as we go along. And uh, uh, definitely feel free to ask questions. Um, um, I may be able to answer them, may not. We'll see. But definitely ask some questions. Um, we're going to have a good time tonight. I'm super excited for it. Before we jump in, I did want to take a moment to thank our sponsor for this 10-episode series um, that is uh, the spring season, and uh, that is RevitFamily.biz. And so let me just roll the clip real quick. So if you guys have been keeping up with the 100 episodes, you know that Brenton Weiberg has been a guest multiple times, I think almost five times. Um, so you know how uh, skilled and and, uh, and knowledgeable he is at Revit Families and creating Revit content. And so um, he was also not only um, nice enough to sponsor this 10 episode season of, uh, of BIM After Dark Live, but he also is offering all you guys 20% off. So head on over to revitfamily.biz and use offer code revitkid23 and download and use um, his families. He's got some phenomenal uh, casework, windows, doors, families, and so on and so forth. So thank you, Brendan, for Brenton, for supporting uh, this show uh, and also being a guest and being such a great um, um, asset to this community. And I see we've got a bunch of uh, returning folks, uh, Stephen and Brian. I see Nick's here from Revit Pure. What's up, Nick? He was on the show last week. Um, yeah, what's really cool about this is um, uh, after 100 episodes, uh, uh, the, the screen names uh, and the usernames for YouTube, recognizing you guys and everyone coming back um, has been awesome. And we got some new folks, too. Uh, looks like um, uh, some some folks if this is their first episode which is really cool so definitely head on over to live.bimafterdark.com and uh, check out all the 99 previous episodes if this is your first because um, I promise you there's some really really great stuff in there some awesome guests some great content 
And finally, um, because this is the last episode of this season, I will be taking a little bit of a break from the live streaming, um, but that does not mean that I will be taking a break from YouTube content. So uh, be ready to uh, keep an eye on the channel. I may not be live, but um, I've got a couple of things planned, um, including a series similar to the Modern Kitchen series uh, for a different project, um, as well as uh, a Revit uh, residential template that I will be um, giving you guys a behind the scene uh, access to. So. Keep an eye on the channel for all of that great content. And uh, and I definitely will restart the live shows at some point in time. But, um, you know, this this is the last one for this little season. So awesome. And Nick Nick Burrow made it live for once. Glad you could make it, man. I know sometimes uh, 9 o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern can be challenging for, for folks. Um, for me personally, um, it's a little easier because both of the kids are in bed. <laughs> um, but it also bodes well for the... Uh, the the topic of this being a happy hour and, and whatnot so all right uh scott davis is here from uh from autodesk scott was also a guest hey scott uh and uh one, one of our most popular episodes it's funny how many people uh how many people i come across in in my professional work outside of the youtube game um that said that they use our our episode talking about bim 360 um to explain bim 360 to uh people that they work with which is pretty awesome uh maybe next season we'll do a refresh because everything's all the names have changed you know permissions have changed everything's changed right now uh awesome great so let's jump into it and again i'm going to keep an eye on the, on the chat as we go along feel free to ask questions um take me in whatever direction you want i do have somewhat of a guideline that i want to go with but um, we're going to talk about revit 2024 um and i'm going to jump right into um some of my oh and scoured is here too scoured you've been here pretty much every episode of the hundred so i hope one day i get to meet some of you guys in person um and if if if, if i do make sure you remind me what your youtube handle is too because i may may not even know uh, your face or anything, just your avatar and your YouTube handle. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so Revit 2024 came out, I think it was about two weeks ago. And full disclosure, it took me a little while to get um, an active license because we were having issues with our license manager. So um, unfortunately, I was behind the ball. But the second I got access to it, I dug in immediately. Um, and, I, and I actually um, tried not to um, watch too many of uh, the other videos and reviews and stuff because I wanted sort of my my own commentary and thoughts on it before it was uh, infected by other people's. Uh, so these are these are my uh, reactions to to Revit 2024 and really the the three things that I'm most excited about. Understanding that there's a lot of other stuff. So the the first thing the the very first thing that I'm super excited about and it, to a lot of people there's been some negative and positive reviews on this and thoughts about it. But um but what I'll do is I'll jump right in and show you kind of the thing that I'm absolutely super stoked about is if I go over here and I flip this to dark and dark mode. Dark mode is amazing for me. Uh, I'm one of those people, well, actually, I, I should back up one second. Uh, <laughs> if you're one of the maniacs that's using Revit with a black canvas, I don't understand you. So dark mode is phenomenal, but um, there's a button up here, right here, for canvas theme. Um, flip that to white because I don't know what kind of crazy person is using Revit with a black canvas. If you are, I'm sorry, I don't understand you. But but the actual dark mode to me is just I've been waiting forever. You know, if you look at my screen here, I'll pull up I'll pull up File Explorer. Notice File Explorer is in dark mode. My Google Chrome, Outlook, uh, Microsoft Teams, Zoom. Uh, you go on the list. Every single program on this computer is in dark mode, including on my phone too. Everything in my phone is dark mode. Um, the only program that wasn't until now has been Revit. So for that alone, super stoked. Uh, you know, I, I just, it's, it's just something that I prefer. It's my, my eyeballs preferred. I just enjoy it. I've always enjoyed that, that contrast. And finally, finally, we have it. Um, you know, unfortunately, and I know um, everyone likes to jump right into the negatives right away of all new features, because that's just how we are as I think architects in, in the AC field. Not every single window is 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 dark moded yet. I'm assuming maybe over time they're going to be doing that. Maybe the developers realized as they did this that holy crap, there's just way too many dialogues in Revit, <laughs> and I think everyone can relate to that because it's just absolutely out of control. Um, but uh, I've used it for a while now, and I got to be honest, like it doesn't even bother me that much. Maybe because I'm using a white canvas that uh, most of, if not all, of the internal dialogues. So notice I go to edit type. If I go to you know, if I go to my view template here. If I select, let's select a uh, an object and go to edit type. 
you know, notice all these all these um, menus are not in dark mode. And I got to be honest with you, I thought I, I thought that was going to be a bummer, but um, it's actually not that bad. And maybe because I'm using a white canvas, um, and I don't know if the plan is to have everything uh, in all of the menus dark moded, so to speak. Um, but but it actually it didn't bother me as much as I thought it would, which is pretty cool. Just the the, the fact that everything else in the background is in dark mode um, is is honestly, I don't know why it took so long to get to this point. I know they also redid a lot of the icons. Uh, if you look closely, you'll notice um, I haven't seen any that changed enough to think that it's it's going to be confusing to you. Um, you know, some of them look a little different, um, like the light bulb on the bottom for, for reveal and toggle elements looks just a little different. Um, under modify, there's a few that look a little different. But the truth is, uh, I haven't found any that that changed um, changed dramatically to the point where I was like, I don't know what this button does based on my previous knowledge of the program. So um, when I heard that icons were changing, I was a little concerned about that, especially as an educator of Revit. Um, you know, it's you always get a little um, uh, worried when UIs change um, dramatically. Um, and, and I don't think this was this was too bad. I don't think um, it's going to modify um, other than dark mode versus light mode um, too much of of the of the, uh, you know, of, 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 of what you've seen and, and how you could relate old versions of Revit to this version of Revit and so on and so forth. Um, so, so I wouldn't be too worried about that. Um, you know, you notice how I, you can flip the canvas theme from, from dark to, to light like this. And again, like I said, if I don't know what kind of maniac works with a black canvas, but, uh, but the actual dark mode itself is awesome. I don't have my Pi Revit installed yet, so, uh, I don't have my colored tab, so I may get a little confused between some sample projects I have open, but it is what it is. I was actually, you know, as much as I love Pi Revit and, and all the other add-ins that are out there for it, I was kind of hoping that maybe Autodesk just threw in colored tabs or some way of doing it into, into the, out of the box, but no, not yet. So, um, looks like everyone is, is pretty pumped about, um, about uh, dark mode, which is pretty cool. Um, I am super excited about it. I know that's a quick one, but I, I like I said, um, if you look at, if I opened up all of the, all the programs on my computer right now, Twin Motion, Outlook, Teams, uh, Word, uh, you just go down the list, Chrome, you name it, every single one of them, InDesign, Photoshop, all dark mode. And so Revit was the only one that wasn't. And so finally, finally, we're there, okay. Um, so I'm just checking to see if there's any questions, guys. Uh, no questions right now. Hey, from Senegal. Hey, when, what time is it in Senegal? Um, <clears throat> cool. Okay, sweet. And Scott Scott Davis says the modify arrow is bigger. Oh, man, what a change. I didn't notice that. Look at that bad boy. Whew. <laughs> Groundbreaking right there. Groundbreaking. <laughs> I'm only joking. Okay, so so I mean, that's really one of my one of my number one favorites. And I know it's crazy when you think about it. But it's just I, I I'm so used to everything, even my messages on my phone, my out, like everything on my phone is, is in dark mode. So just that alone has been so much easier on my on my eyes. Um, um, yeah. And so so super happy. I know a lot of people are like, well, it just looks like CAD, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's fine. I mean, whatever. The civil 3D CAD, they all kind of have that background. 3D Max has had dark mode forever. Um, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> okay, so so that's that's number one. Number one is dark mode. I'm super excited about that. If you guys have any questions on dark mode or want me to play around with anything with it, um, you know, go for it. Um, and then number two is what I know a lot of people are are are, are interested in and 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 sort of uh, probably wondering and, and and wondering if you haven't played with it yet how it works and 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 whatnot and what what it's all about is the the topography changes. Um, you know, we've. We've waited a long time for for Autodesk to make some moves on topography, and um, I'm someone that um, you know when I'm when I'm when I'm when I'm doing the construction management side of, of Reviting, um, we do a lot a lot of topography and site modeling. Um, you know, construction sites. If you've seen the channel, if you watch the channel, I've seen I've shown you a lot of examples of of what we do with topography, and so. Um, I was super excited to 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 just see what 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 they were gonna do. Um, you know, we, we kind of all knew that it was coming. The the rumor mill was 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 pretty loud. Um, you know, the the roadmap talked about it. We didn't really know what it was gonna be, um, but it's here now. So we're gonna jump into Topo Solids, and I'm gonna sort of show you guys what it is. Um, give you kind of my thoughts and opinions on it, um, as well as some of the cool things that I think we're gonna be able to do because of it. Um, so with that, I think we'll jump right into to this lovely um, new tool. 
um, if you have opened Revit 2024, um, you may have noticed under the Massing and Site tab, there's no longer a topography button, right? It's a topo solid button. And so if you pull that down, you have um, create from scratch, sketch and create from import. So what I'm going to do is I have a couple examples. I'm going to run through some examples of converting, excuse me, um, converting a, a, a topography, existing topography to topo solid to show you kind of what happens there. Um, but also some of the, the tricks and tips and tricks I've already kind of figured out with, with trying to use this thing. Um, first of all, trying to use it just like you did the topography tool, um, as well as just some of the cool things now that we can do with it now that it is a a solid and and that to me is the key word um is that it's a solid and so um there's a lot of positive i guess repercussions not the good word outcomes of of the fact that it is now a solid okay so uh so what i'm gonna do is i'm actually gonna start i was gonna start in a sample project but i actually think i'll start in a, in a blank project so i can just show you guys what this is so i'm going to be using the um the out of the out of the box template which i think is it's it's new now as well there's an out of the box multidisciplinary template there's also new sample files um, um i don't know if it's public who made them so i'm not going to say but they're they're really cool um, a lot of neat stuff to just pick apart and figure out and look at and see how how it was pulled together um, so definitely check out the the new sample files as well um, the new the new template i haven't dug in too much um, um, but the reason I'm starting with it is it already has a really good topo solid um, system type, um, you know, with it. So that's good. Okay, so topo solid. <clears throat> so with with topography, um, you know, the process has always been pretty simple, right? It's it's um, you know, you click topography, you click, uh, you know, you 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 set your elevation, and you basically click points, right? Um, so the difference with the topo solid, and and actually, I shouldn't say, I should just. So everyone who's trying to understand this thing gets it. It's really just a floor. <laughs> it's got some really cool features to it. But if anyone out there has ever just made a floor that had a variable, um, a variable surface to it, so or a roof, for example, right? Um, hopefully, you guys maybe in the past have done flat roofs with like uh, actually um, sloped insulation where you have a variable layer to it. It's really all it is. So um, with some other advantages um, so as far as just understanding how to use it um, it's a floor basically uh, where you're modifying the sub elements um, so so instead of thinking I'm, I'm drawing points right away um, you're actually drawing a a um, a sketch an outline a perimeter right away um, which is actually kind of neat because um, for those of you who, who maybe didn't know uh, on regular topo topo surfaces you actually couldn't do certain things like cutting out a hole or having a c-shape um, sort of the way that, that you would be thinking, cutting out a hole, I guess you could, but, um, but you couldn't do a C shape because it would always triangulate between the points. Um, so anyways, um, it's basically a floor. I know S S Scott said the kernel is like the floor. It's, it's basically a floor. I'm going to stick with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really quickly just draw a sketch. So you notice I hit topo solid and I'm in our typical floor and roof boundary condition stuff, right? So everyone, everyone's familiar with this. Um, so I'm just going to draw a quick rectangle. Okay, so there we go. So that's already a difference, right? Normally, you're just drawing points right away. Here, we're drawing a rectangle. And actually, you know what? Yeah, yeah, we'll do that for now. Um, so so here's here's my here's my rectangle for the floor, right? So now instead of um, drawing points to actually generate it, you're actually going to draw the floor first and then modify the sub elements, which is to add points within it. Okay, so if I click add points, now I'm basically in my modifying sub elements part of, of floor modeling, which now we're calling the topo solid, right? But there are some really neat things that um, you guys should pay attention to when you mess with it, which is up here, right? So by default topography, you pretty much had to do absolute elevation. Um, and that was the only option you had, right? Here, um, what you can do is you can actually change what reference your points are from. So current level, base point, survey point, internal origin. Um, but you can also do um, an offset from the surface, which is kind of neat. And so I haven't found a ton of a ton of um, thoughts or, or reasons to use this other than, you know, if, if you if you don't have don't want to do the math or something, if you're doing a three foot dig um, and so on and so forth, instead of doing the math from your actual contours, you can actually go directly below it. So let's just first, before we do that, let's do an absolute elevation. I'm gonna go off of the project base point and I'm gonna say 10 feet. I'm gonna to go top down. And I know this is something that's gonna piss people off right away, is as you start drawing these, what you'll notice is my, my mouse is locking to everything, 
okay? So the first thing I notice is because it's using this, this floor tool, right? You're seeing the triangles. Um, if you're gonna try and like refine these edges, you're getting snapped all over the place. Let me go to hidden lines so you can see. Like I'm getting snapped all over the place, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo all that and I'm gonna show you a quick tip, which is if you go to manage and snaps and you check the box for snaps off. I know there's a keyboard shortcut for SO, but that will turn on snaps every time you make a, um, a move. So every time you click, if you check the box here and you turn snaps off completely, you can always turn it back on. Now, when you go to modify your sub elements, you add your points. Now, let me add 10 feet here. Now I can draw freely and you'll notice I'm actually not snapping to all those silly triangles that are popping up, right? And when you do that, <clears throat> not only do you get to not have the annoyance of locking to everything on the planet, so let me just draw this one here. I'm gonna go to 15 feet now. Now you can also use my favorite tool, which hopefully you guys, if you followed my, my blog or the YouTube channel for a long time, have seen this tool, which is just called Auto Clicker. There's a blog post, I'll link it below. Basically, it clicks every number of seconds um, that you want. So I'm gonna set it to 150 milliseconds. Um, and then start is F6, stop is F6, right? So what I'm gonna do now is if I go down here and I wanna draw a lot of points and make them smooth, I can still do exactly what I would do with topography. If I hit F6, you'll notice it's actually just drawing, I'm not clicking. Do you hear I, I'm not clicking my mouse? Um, and the slower you move, obviously, the more points it's gonna grab. But now you can just kind of trace around trace around your topography as you go through it all. The The triangles can be very annoying to look at, um, but that's actually what topography was doing anyways. A little a little smoother, um, but you know, they're annoying to look at, but it doesn't really make a difference. It actually still smooths out pretty good. So I just sort of, I, I just pressed F6, dragged my mouse along, pressed F6 again. That's my auto clicker tool that hopefully you guys um, have seen before. And now you can see um, I'm starting to sort of build, build some topography here, right? <clears throat> so now if you're bringing an image in, if you're tracing over a CAD file, whatever it ends up being, um, you can still do that, right? And I, I'll turn my snaps back on. But my first tip would be 100% uh, turn snaps off when you're, when you're modifying that because you're just going to run into a whole bunch of crap. Okay, so what does this mean now? Okay, if you look at this, it looks very much like our topography. Um, you know, and even, even to the point where I didn't necessarily click to the end, so we still have the stupid annoying thing at the bottom here where it's doing what it is. But the difference is because it's basically a floor, <laughs> but we'll call it a solid. Um, now you have, and, and let me let me cut a section through it so you guys can see. I'm also going to change my view settings to the 70, 50, 20 rule, something that hopefully you guys have seen if you follow my channel. If not, just Google it. Um, but you're seeing it now, which is, uh, I'll turn off shadows for now, which is um, turning on ambient shadows, setting your sun to 70, your ambient light to 50, your shadows to 20. I'll turn on anti-aliasing too, because why not? And there we go. Now we have a much sexier looking view, although that green for that grass is a little oof, a little bright. But um, what you'll notice is that it's this, it's basically a floor um, or a roof or, you know, a system family in Revit that you guys are probably familiar with, ceiling even, I guess, a stacked layered system. But it's using those contours to do it. So it actually adds a ton of flexibility. So I, w I don't want to go through every single tool that exists with it now. Um, I will tell you, subregions are gone. So if I click subdivide, what it does now is this thing that like lays a, a surface on top of it. So I'll just quickly click subdivide. Um, and you can see it, it actually lays a surface on top of it. Um, you can change the thickness, but you can't go negative. So if I say one inch and I turn this material to um, something like asphalt, for example, Let's see if there's one in the this new family. Oh, there, yes, no, yeah, I guess a light gray will do that. Fine. Um, and then you can not you can have it show or not show the contours, but it still follows it. Um, would be pretty cool if it just sort of sunk down into it if you want to do like a road, but um, either way, um, basically a subregion. The, the, <laughs> let me show you something really cool though. If I say copy and move this over, watch this. Ready, ready, ready? Oh, yeah. So I got a warning. You guys didn't see it, but. I was able to overlap them, okay? So I know we don't want to overlap them, but everyone out there can probably sympathize, sympathize with me on the absolute insane frustration of subregions and overlapping and how 
insanely annoying it was, right? So the cool thing here is, yes, you're going to get a warning, but you can finish the sketch and you can actually just complete the damn thing. So I don't know how many of you have gone through what I've gone through where you've done this huge like site parking lot or something and had to select and copy your pink magenta lines, cancel your sketch, see what the hell you were uh, uh, um, overlapping with or change the other one and then create a new sketch just to paste it back in because you couldn't finish the sketch and overlap it. So that alone, <laughs> that alone, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked about. Um, so you notice I was actually able to overlap these two sketches. It gave me a warning, and you know I'm not saying you want to, but anyone who's ever dealt with site stuff and sharing edges and, and whatnot, that alone is just is just really cool to me. Um, you know, obviously it would be really cool if it goes down and sunk into it or let you go negative with the dimension, but uh, it does let you go positive like forever, which is kind of interesting. So like if I did 100 feet, um, of course I have a section box on. So, you know, it, it's going like that and it's still following the contours, which is kind of interesting. So if I modify the sub elements and I, I take some of these and I shift them over here, let's say, or maybe I'll just draw some more. Fine. Let's do some at 15 again. We'll do some over here. What you'll notice is that this guy up there changed too, right? He's, he's following along with it. And so why you would need to do that? I haven't quite figured out yet, but 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 you can if you needed to so <clears throat> so super cool super cool i think that that um yes and you can join them yes nick sorry i just saw it. yes so, and you can you can you can join and cut and stuff with with the subregions together too which is super cool so um or so, i call them subregions sorry they're not subregions right they're called uh subdivides i don't know i'm gonna what is it actually called it's just another yeah subdivision i guess man whatever i'm gonna still call them subregions i don't care <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, and I, I just saw Jorge mention the performance thing. So I'm actually going to talk about that a little bit. So I've tested that as well. And so I'll show you guys a quick example of performance because that was my first thought too was um, I do a lot of, I do a lot of really large sites and um, anyone who's modified really large topography knows how dramatically insane the performance can be like adding a little teeny pad and clicking finish on a giant topography can take forever. Um, so I wanted to compare those. And so we'll talk about that in a second, but um, good, good point there. And I'll show you. So what I wanted to do is just kind of riff on, um, on why I'm excited though, uh, about, about this tool, um, as far as what it is. And so I know, I know people aren't very happy with the fact that pads went away because of the solution that we have so far. So there are no more building pads. Okay. And as you know, longtime Revit users, that has just been a staple of, <laughs> of the Revit process is, you know, building a site, putting a pad, cutting the hole in, et cetera. Right. Um, and so, you know, I was curious too to see like, what does that mean? What is, what is that going to do to workflows? And I don't think it's going to be that bad. And I actually think in the long run, it is going to be pretty cool. Um, and so for those of you um, who don't, I'm, I'm not going to show a pad, so I won't go down that road actually. So, so basically what you have to do now is generate a family or an object, uh, a void object that can cut it. And so I've seen a lot of, um, of content basically saying, and even I think in the Autodesk help, it shows like a mass in place family. So um, you can, and I'm gonna do that right now, but you can also just use a regular family. Um, uh, you can create a family, you can do an in-place one, you can do just an extrusion, sweep, all that stuff. Um, and that's what's really cool about it is because it's now a solid object, you can actually um, you know, cut it with void objects of any type, which I think is really cool. So first I'll just show you kind of the, the out of the box um, Autodesk suggested way if you go to the, uh, if you go to the, um, oops. Here, I hit the zoom button there. I'm not on with the guess. What am I doing? Um, so, so basically, um, they they basically, and they by they I mean Autodesk basically show in their help video um, to go over to massing and site in place mass. Um, we'll call this one pad one for now, just for fun. And I'm just gonna draw a rectangle for now. Uh, yeah, let's, actually, you know, for fun, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna draw a reference um, a reference line. I'm gonna draw it on a work plane. And I'm going to turn on three. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll do that reference line rectangle here. All right. So if I zoom under here, you can see I basically just made this rectangle down here out of reference planes. <clears throat> I'm gonna take those. I'm gonna say create a void form. And if I go underneath it, I'm going to cut geometry. Select my topo solid. Oops. I didn't create my form, sorry. Try that again, create void form. Okay, pull this thing up. 
So there's my void, and then I'm just going to cut geometry with this. And now I've got you know this this thing here, right? Which is which is my my uh, my mass, and that's cutting a hole in it. Obviously, you could control the bottom and top. You know, so so there's a couple things that this does. First, first what it does is if I drag this thing down, click finish, and I turn on a section box. You know, it can do that, right? And so creating tunnels is you know one of those things that we just couldn't do forever in Revit. Um, you know, we we had so many workarounds. It was putting topo and then putting a floor on top of it and modifying the floor, which I guess we're kind of doing now, but we can do it within the same one. So so there's some benefits there. Um, the other benefit too is, you know, because it's a mass, if you use a mass family, for example, let me go back to edit in place. I'm going to click this guy. It's probably yelling at me because I've got all this stuff going on. If I pull this back up, you know, some of the things that are pretty neat about it is, you know, you can, if you, if you modify, you know, the mass family, um, you know, you can start doing things like less straight edges and so on and so forth, right? Um, actually, it's, let's have some fun with this. Let me cancel that. So if I wanted to, um, let's draw, let's draw another in-place mass. Um, so we're going to do in-place mass. I'm just going to call it mass one for now. I'm going to do reference plane, spline through points, and we're going to do it on a surface. And so I'm going to have some fun here, and I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to copy. So I'm just doing a spline through points. Um, yeah, I'm going to copy this up. And this is the kind of stuff I think about when I see, you know, oh, I can do these masses. Uh, so we'll take this, we'll all shift it off a little bit, and then actually I have to close this, huh? Bummer. That's going to be a pain. Let me, let me close it first. <clears throat> Let's do... 3D snapping. Okay. Okay. So we're going to take this whole thing and we're going to copy it up. Because again, this is a conceptual mass, so why not? And I didn't select the whole thing. Let's try again. This was not in my plan to do live, so let's see. <clears throat> take this guy, copy it up. Okay, there we go. Okay, so if I select this and this, and I say create a void form, right, you can see what I did is I created this, this shape that, uh, that basically, you know, it's got all these curves in it and stuff, right? And from that now I can cut out, actually, let me bring it above the surface, move it up a little bit. Oops. arrow keys why not we're having fun okay so uh so now you can see there it is there so i can say cut cut geometry okay so now it's doing that which is like okay whatever you can make a pad do that but you know now you can actually start taking like this edge here and doing that right or maybe this spline point here and doing that right so now what you'll see is I've got these angular sort of, and I can even over, I can even do an internal, you know, pull it this way. And you've got sort of this internal cave thing going on there. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, so, so, you know, I, I guess being able to use a mass, um, what's kind of cool about that is you can actually start curving and cutting away some interesting, you know, shapes within it. Um, which to me is kind of cool if, if you're designing even a building that's maybe in the hillside and has these co cool, cool things tying it in and whatnot but you could also just do an extrusion and so for those of you using revit lt who don't have massing capabilities um, you can just do a model in place extrusion you can make a family as an extrusion but then you obviously can't follow the surface the biggest issue that i have with it right now is the fact that it's it's an element that you have to model in place and then you have to you know hide it filter it do whatever you need with it to, to maintain it right pad was always its own little thing um, you know, so, so it was easier with categories and whatnot to control it to some extent. Um, you could also, um, click, you know, click walls and have it hosted to walls. This, you're going to have to lock to walls. So, you know, some, some downfalls there, but otherwise, you know, you could see, you could actually do a lot of like the custom customization, the flexibility of this is, is huge. Sorry. I saw there's a lot of chats. Let me just double check to make sure I'm not having, uh, um, 
Is Scott, is Scott getting a hard time? You, you showed up, man. Scott, the, you decided to show up in the, in the chat. I guess I didn't have to say you worked for Autodesk, Scott. Maybe, maybe I could have kept you under wraps, but I think they would have figured out it all. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but the other things that you can do too, um, you know, because now it's a surface, which I think is pretty wild, is so for the longest time, and you guys have probably seen on the channel, I've showed, uh, I've even showed this file before. Right, we've been using railings to to do things like follow follow topography, right? For for things like <clears throat> construction fencing, um, for things like um, supportive excavation. For here's a here's a, a highway rail, you know, metal highway rail, and so that still works, and that still, um, in fact, probably works better, honestly, uh, um, with a with a, a topo solid because it's a it's a floor. Um, <laughs> So, so I, I feel like railings just are going to host better to it, but, um, so I can pick a new host and you can see this will do that, um, you know, go through it and it still does the same janky stuff with that one profile, but so you can still do that. But what's really neat is because it's a solid, you can actually, and if you have massing, of course, um, you can actually follow the surface with stuff. So whether you're making an adaptive component or an in-place mass, I'm going to do one in place because I don't feel like making an adaptive component. But if I do an in-place mass, I'm going to say um, pipe two or something like that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a reference um, reference line. I'm going to do a, a snap through or a spline through points. And instead of draw on work plane, I'm going to say follow surface or draw on face. And then I'm going to do um, follow surface right here. And what you'll see is it's actually looking, it's looking at all these triangles. Hopefully you guys can see that. So I can actually now have families, whether it's an adaptive family or a model in place, right? I can now start modeling with things um, that follow my topo surface. They're hosted. Those points are hosted to my topo surface. So if I wanted to real quickly, I could draw a circle on this work plane right here. Okay. So then I'll select that. I'll select my my spline through points and I'll say create form. Of course I went too tight. Hold on. You guys didn't see the error, but I got self intersecting. So somewhere on here I must have went uh, a little too oh of course look at the end there. What the hell is that? Come on. Come on, there we go. <clears throat> Okay, so I select here and here, press create form. Now you'll see I'm actually making a, a family. This is in place, but you can make an adaptive family. Um, and it's actually following the surface. And those points are hosted to the surface. So when the surface modifies, it modifies with it. So that's a solid. But then I believe, and I actually haven't even tested this. It was a theory that I didn't get to test before we did. If I switch it to a void and I cut it, there you go. <clears throat> I'm, I'm using that now to actually slice into my topography. Look at it, it even made a little, you made a little tunnel there where I didn't put enough points, right? So when you think of that now, right? Like that, that's blowing my mind, right? Cause now the, yes, there, there could be some pros and cons to the points and the, you know, the, the process that I just talked about, the fact that it's kind of a floor, but the fact that it's now a solid and then I can slice and dice it like any other Ge solid geometry in Revit um, is really cool. Like, <laughs> like when you start thinking about that, there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with it. Um, and, and yeah, I'm using the massing tool, but um, you know, you can build families now that that can just be hosted to this surface and and cut cut things in it, right? And so um, there's a lot of a lot of really neat things I think that we can do with this. So I'm super excited about that part. I I, I hope that shows you some some little examples of of how that could happen. Uh, the downfall, um, you know, of that is obviously it's a mass, and so you got to deal with that. So if I click finish here, um, I just got yelled at for a circular chain of references for something. I don't know what I did there. Interesting. Topo solid, topo solid, deleted element. Okay. I guess I can't finish that mass. I don't know. I did something there. But either way, <laughs> you get the idea. Right. The idea is that now you can start hosting hosting objects to this. You can make adaptive components. You can make void families. You can do in-place voids, and and you can really start sculpting topography um, to make it something that you need, which is something we can never really do. Right. It's it's always been an absolute pain uh, to deal with that kind of stuff. So um, super cool. Uh, uh, I'm super excited about it, and 
and I hope you are too. Um, so it's 9.40 now, so I plenty of time to show my next favorite thing. Um, obviously, we can go on for a while with Topo Salads. And actually, oh, that's what I want to do. Sorry, let me let me cancel this mask. I don't have time to figure out what that error was, so we'll go through it. So somebody mentioned performance. So one of the things I did uh, <laughs> uh, for fun uh, was to take a, a project I'm currently working on, which is massive. So if I click this, um, you'll see it is 223. Nope. 2 million square feet so it's big so so this is this is topo topography um and this is the topo salad so first i wanted to see um you know upgrading a model the whole conversion process what is that like um so it works pretty well um it converts your sub regions to those new sub sub solids <laughs> i don't know what we're going to call them now um uh and they do have a thickness and they kind of try to figure it out it's, so that's okay um, but it does get rid of all your pads so fair warning there but the reason I wanted to do this is um, to also see the performance. So here, here's my topo salad now made from the topography. Um, so you'll notice it made this big topo salad. It actually converted my sub regions to these mini topo salads um, and made them one foot off, which is kind of stupid. <laughs> I kind of wish that that default was smaller. Maybe there's a way to set the default smaller. But um, so because it kind of looks stupid to have a one foot road dig there, but whatever. Um, but you could see it actually converted pretty much everything from the topography to a topo solid point wise and everything like that. The only thing it didn't convert was the pads, right? So, so these are all pads here. So you'd have to go back and, and regenerate, although I don't know, oh, this is me testing stuff out. I was gonna say that was me. <laughs> There's no pad. So, so you'd have to regenerate your pads. But the reason I really want to do this, and I'm not going to actually show you because it would take like 20 minutes to spin and whatever. <clears throat> was I wanted to see if if it performed faster, right? That project has been a pain in my side in the sense that if I modify a pad, it takes ages to, to finish the sketch, right? Just because you see how big that topography is, right? Um, and so uh, that's what I was trying to do. And so I noticed a few things. Um, it, it did seem to perform kind of similar, uh, modifying the points. Um, it took a little while once you modify the point, but there's no real finished sketch, so you're not waiting for that. The weight is happening somewhere else, so that wasn't too bad. And then I did put in, you saw I put in a, a right here, I just put in a void to see, how, does that take as long as a a um, a a pad would have to finish the sketch? It still took a while. I didn't do a complete comparison to time it, like with a clock, it felt like it finished a little faster, but it still took a while. So I didn't really notice a massive uh, increase in performance um, between the tests that I was running here and there. Um, I think if I created a subregion, that new sub solid thing, maybe it would be a little faster because that, that seems to run a little quicker. But, um, you know, adding points and modifying something on gigantic topography didn't seem to have a huge performance increase. So um, that's nothing scientific. I'm sure I'm hoping someone out there maybe does this scientific sort of thing to see. My thought was that it would perform a little better. Uh, and maybe to some extent it does, um, but right now I don't have the math to tell you that it does. But I do know that I was able to convert that giant site to Topo Salad pretty successfully, other than losing the pads, which isn't isn't all that you know. I, mean, I wouldn't say it's all that. I wouldn't want to make them on this one, but um, just so if you know it's going to happen, you know you you get rolling with it. Hey Kylie, thanks for the congratulations. Awesome. Uh, uh, Richie's here live. Awesome. Just checking to see if I missed any. Uh, any uh, any questions in there? No. Okay. Sweet. So, uh, with these last fifteen minutes, um, and and definitely if Topo Salads, you know, I'm definitely gonna dig into this more. So I will probably have more content on it in the future as I just explore and, and mess around and, and find some really neat things that you could do with it. So um, definitely stay tuned for that. So number three, as far as what I'm excited about. Um, is kind of a it's kind of a double because it's not entirely fair that it's just a Revit thing, but it kind of happened at the same time. So we're going to compare the two, and that is the 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 next evolution of this Twin Motion and Revit uh, and Autodesk partnership. So for a while, um, I was trying to figure out kind of what that was going to mean, and uh, we got the little button in the 2023 update, um, which basically just did the same thing as the Twin Motion uh, <laughs> as the Twin Motion exporter. So it was like, okay, fine, we, we got a button, but it's the same as the add and I've had forever. Um, with 2024, um, we finally do have a direct link. Um, so what I'm gonna, and the reason I'm also excited about it is because uh, 2020, uh, Twin Motion 2023 came out, which has a new UI too, so super exciting. So 
let me show you what that's all about. Um, and we're going to do it on this project here. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, there'll be a new series coming out on the on the channel um, in, in the coming months, and uh, it will be this project. So um, you guys, uh, if you haven't seen the Modern um, the modern Kitchen series, definitely check it out. There's 18 episodes um, on the channel. I'll put a link below as well um, where I, I went through the process of designing a, a kitchen renovation on a mid-century modern project. This is a ground-up um, project of a modern barn um, that I'm working on right now. And um, I'm going to be doing a series similar to that uh, with this project. So stay tuned for that. <clears throat> but now, um, so what I'm excited about is, um, you know, the I, I've always with Twin Motion, I, I've always kind of used uh, I've been OK with exporting and then refreshing in Twin Motion, mainly because I use a lot of phasing and design options when I'm using it. But as a design tool, um, having the quick connection to the iteration is is important, right? It's, you know if it becomes a design tool side by side. So um, finally, um, we do have that um, with Twin Motion. we have a direct link. So the the button up here under view is built in again. Uh, most of this looks the same as 2023 updates, but you'll notice that there's an auto sync checkbox now. Okay, so before we had to do was refresh it manually, whether it's in Revit or in in um, in in Twin Motion. Um, so pretty cool. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to open this thing and we're going to cross our fingers that the 4K camera streaming and the two programs don't blow up my laptop. Um, I'm going to turn on auto sync and I'm going to open in twin motion. And we're going to cross our fingers while that opens in the background. I'm going to try and do a side by side as well. Um, so bear with me on the uh, on the resolutions. But OK, so this is what pops up. OK, if you have an existing project, it might be a little different. But right now I'm just going to create a new project from scratch and I'm going to run through run through what it is. Um, so you can see it's saying, I want to create a direct link in twin motion. Um, I'm going to say new project or existing project, depending on what it is. So I'm going to say new project. I am going to collapse by material. I'm going to turn on fix, fix UV normals. I'm going to bring in all. So I'm going to bring in my lights and my meshes, which is pretty awesome. Um, I'm going to set my light values to twin motion default because otherwise they're going to be nuclear bombs going off and I'm going to click okay. So what I was doing is it launched twin motion and it automatically links direct linked my Project. So if I go way up here, because it's way up in the sky, <clears throat> you can see here is my barn. I don't have any textures on it in Revit, um, so that's why you're not seeing many textures here. But let me go here. Let's try this side by side. I know how much we all love uh, side by side with Revit. Uh, I can hide. I can finally hide everything in Twin Motion now, which is awesome. So here's my Twin Motion side of things. So now we have a direct link going on. So if I was to delete this railing, for example, you'll notice that it gets deleted in twin motion. So if I was to modify these stairs, or actually let's do something different. Let's uh, let's take this railing and move it, shift it around. I can't select it. Oh, I selected the top rail, that's why. Come on, there it is. If I slide this off, you'll notice it is sliding automatically in twin motion and it actually works pretty pretty quick which is which is awesome so you can still do the uh, the the export refresh type of thing but when it comes to being a being a design tool right this is where um to me i always use enscape over twin motion notice i haven't i, I upgraded this so the paths didn't cut so if i'm sitting in here you know this is a perspective that you're not going to get in revit unless you go in a level one view um, you know, now I can go in here and I can modify some things and sort of see how they look. So if I go to my 3D view and for some reason I want to, uh, I want to move this door over this way, right? You'll notice on this side, notice the door moves, right? And, you know, this is all the default materials. So we can sit there and we can, we can apply materials to this and, and it would hold those materials um, and, and vice versa. I just undid it there. Um, so now it's finally a true, a true direct link to um, to twin motion, um, which is which is pretty often. Awesome. I wasn't going to dive down into twin motion 2023. You might have saw a video I, I talked about that a little bit, um, but but now it actually is a program that um, I can truly say you can you can actually work side by side with it. So it can become a little more of a design tool when you, when you're doing it that way. Um, and now and it does work really well. I was concerned when I saw when I heard that the direct link existed now that their performance was going to be pretty, pretty janky, um, but it actually works really well. Um, and this computer, believe it or not, this is my older BIM box. So this is actually an i7 three, three year old laptop right now. I'm in the transition process. Um, and, and so it's, it's a, 
it's an old it's a three-year-old laptop and you see it's actually handling the process um the process uh you know the changes um pretty dramatic or pretty easily uh which is was surprising to me i thought it was going to be kind of kind of tough so you see i just undid that you can see the direct link processing and obviously the faster computer you have the faster that that link will happen um as, as you go through it so uh pr pretty awesome there and 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 obviously you know i, I don't want to dive through uh uh, all the twin motion stuff but you can real quickly i'll just show you you know if, if you do apply twin motion materials to it um so if i wanted to uh if i had the materials down here and let's jump in i uh let's go to let's throw some materials on it it's going to maintain the uh the twin motion materials as we go through it i don't know let's do planks for now sure <clears throat> oh Actually, real quick twin motion tip for you guys that uh, took me forever to realize. And if you if you have watched my my videos on twin motion, I complain about this a lot. Um, it's applying materials and having to rescale them. Um, up here, if I there's this little checkbox here. If I pull that down, if you set if you set this from object UV, it's a material thing when you're applying materials. Um, if you set it to cubic UVs instead of from object UVs and you drag any of the stuff in, it's actually scaled already. <laughs> I don't know if that existed forever. I just didn't know it. I don't remember where I, where I actually learned it, but, um, but you don't have to rescale it anymore, which is awesome. But what I was trying to get out there is, um, you know, the, this, the materials and the stuff you do with twin motion will maintain and the background model of your import will, will go. So, um, super cool. Uh, and, and I think that's the first, probably the first sort of incarnation of this partnership that we're seeing where we're actually starting to see, um, some benefits potentially of it. So I'm super excited about that. I'm gonna dig into that a little more too. So, um, you know, I definitely look forward to, to that. Um, just checking the chat here. Um, thanks Yogi, Modern Kitchen was fantastic. Thanks, appreciate it. That was fun, a fun series. Um, uh, FBX, some, some people are talking about FBX and Max Files. Um, yeah, so so Twin Motion can, and that's one of the benefits of using of using a tool like Lumiana Twin Motion is that you can import um, lots and lots and lots of other file types um, successfully without having to bring them into Revit. Um, the, the one thing that I will say that's, um, and this isn't a Revit thing, this is more of a twin motion thing. There's no way, there's no way to, link, um, to link twin motion objects to Revit objects um, without removing them. So, so you, can, you can do an object replace um, and replace objects in, in, in kind. And I think I, I have a video on that with cars where like I put a bunch of placeholder cars and I swap them out. But the problem is, if you refresh it, um, then those cars come back. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't hold. It doesn't hold a dynamic link. So that is that is a little downfall with it. But uh, the twin motion file is a separate file. Yes. So that is a a Stephen uh, just asked. Hey Stephen, nice to see you, buddy. Stephen's in the BIM After Dark community. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, head on over to community.bimafterdark.com. Uh, lots of cool stuff over there. Um, the twin motion model is is a separate file. Um, it is a separate scene. Um, it is because uh, you know over there is where and again this is this is where you kind of get the best of both worlds is here is where you can start building you know building your world so to speak um, so you know, you can start throwing in that's not the tree I want to use you, know, you can start throwing in trees and and plants and stuff like that and 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 whatnot and that saves as a as a scene um, and then when you you don't lose it though so you notice when I launched <clears throat> when I launched um, when I launched Twin Motion, it asked me new scene or existing. When I said open in Twin Motion, and uh, for the direct link, and um, and you can actually choose the existing scene. So you can go in and populate everything, call it a day. But you are saving a different scene. It's just that direct link is happening for you. <clears throat> uh, yes, you can export. Um, Joe just asked if you can export the model to clients. If you're using the paid version of Twin Motion, you have cloud-based options for exporting. Um, I think in the free version with Revit, you don't have cloud. You may be able to export an EXE. I actually have to check that, which is a standalone that you can technically share with clients, but you don't have cloud access as far as I know. That is the the only difference between the version that comes with Revit and the premium version that you would buy from Epic is um, you you can use the cloud um, publishing tools um, with the, with the, the paid version, so awesome. Uh, all right. I was just checking to see if there was any, uh, any other questions. Uh, I don't think too many. Uh, okay, sweet. All right. Well, 
this has been a lot of fun. I, I hope this is helpful for you guys. My top three of the dark mode, the topo solids, and the twin motion direct connect. I know there's a lot more, so feel you know definitely check them out. Um, something that I will be launching pretty soon, and I know people have asked about this, and this was actually the other topic for the um, the that I got a lot of questions on was template files and certain template things. Um, and so one of the things I am making available and will be making available soon is my residential Revit template along with sample files and whatnot. Um, so those of you in the BIM After Dark community, you already have access to it. You might have seen that today. So if you want access right now, you guys are interested, then join the community right now. It's a perfect time. Um, if not, I'm going to be making a, a separate opportunity for you guys to get the template. And I'm going to be making a video showing how I set up my Revit uh, residential, single family residential Revit template and make it available to you guys. Um, <clears throat> and yeah. Thank you guys. This has been awesome. Uh, I cannot believe it's a hundred episodes. Um, pretty wild. Uh, the 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 support, the audience, the the way you guys have been hanging out this whole time. I, I hope that um, these this show and these episodes have have brought as much value to you guys as they have to me. Um, I will also be in built in Austin, uh, Austin, I think it is uh, in, in June. So hopefully if you guys are going, make sure you sign up for my session, first of all, um, but also come say hi to me. A lot of you guys are avatars on, 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 on screen here, or maybe comments after the video is published. Um, I'd love to meet you guys in person. So don't be shy. Now that everyone sees my face and has seen my face over a hundred times, uh, hopefully you guys will recognize me. I'll probably be wearing these shirts the whole time too. Um, so, um, definitely come up and see me and, uh, yeah. Super awesome. You guys are amazing. Um, with that, I want to bid you guys a great weekend. Um, again, I'll have some some published videos coming up soon, but I won't be live for a little while. So uh, until then, you guys also have an awesome summer coming up. I hope you all stay healthy and happy. Um, keep keep digging in. Keep, keep uh, exploring these technologies. And I look forward to uh, 100 more episodes soon. So with that, I bid you all adieu. Thank you so much. And, uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Thank you.